Hello, dear friends. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Alina Smolansky, a certified instructor of Neurographica, and I welcome you to my short review of what Neurographic Art, Neurographica, and NeuroArt are. Welcome to my Neurographic Art and Life Studio. So why this question about art and comparing emerged is because I can see many drawings and specifically for those who joined my group, I assume that you would like to learn what Neurographica and Neurographic art is. And there are many, many other drawings that are presented as Neurographic art and they're not. And so I'd like to explain and point out what makes Neurographic art and Neurographic or Neurographic art. So as you can see here, and there are many drawings you can recognize online. By the way, this is, I just made my drawing by myself. It's not anybody else. And there are so many drawings like this. And there are no, nothing wrong with them. If you feel comfortable, if you like them, please continue drawing the way you want. But my only like, suggestion is just if you want to learn what neurographic art is, yes, please attend to this class, attend to my explanation, and you will understand why I do not call this drawing neurographic art. It may be considered a neuro art, which is very loose definition of anything else, and it's not what officially neuro art is. So I'll just show you why it's not again. I drew it, so I'm not pointing in anyone else and who can find a similar drawing. It's not, I didn't copy anybody's art. So, and again, if you feel comfortable just drawing this, please do. I'm not criticizing you. I encourage you to draw what makes you happy and what, what makes those who surround you also happy. So here you are. And you can see that the lines are just removing free form. Sometimes neurographic art is called free form. It's not really free. It's made with a conscious effort. And that con conscious effort is specifically related to the neurographic line. So this line is just, as probably was done very quickly with the hand of movement like this. And every page is like what I did. Just, just to move your hand freely. And that's what sometimes presented as the neurographic line. So it's 1.1 1 .1 is the neurographic line. Then I will explain what it is and why I do not consider this neurographic line. Also rounding. Rounding, I have nothing to do with. It's probably the most easiest to draw, to connect a line, to connect these fat corners, rounding, even without knowing why we do them and why, why they're so important. Okay. So sometimes even it's presented without like lines like this. Also this figure is by itself whatever it is, and coloring is also each, as you can see, it's like a mosaic. Every color is applied separately in every cell, every area, so which is not what we do with the neurographic, and also there are no any other lines uh, connecting the figure in the background, and that's what I was studying in um, my classes, and the classes of any Neurographic Certified Instructor. Explain why I uh, do this. I will also, sometimes you can see also drawings like this, like similar like this. It was, could be like just a line, a few figures. And um, like this also, also, I just drew it freehand like by looking some other drawings online. Okay, so now let's look what makes Neurographica uh, such a distinct method. This is an example of drawing that I showed in the, my 
basic user course. And it's this specific kind of drawing, it's called the algorithm for removing inner constraints. The algorithm means, it, it means it's just a, like the element, just a very way. It's a seven step formula, like step by step instructions, how we draw a neurographic. So the why this drawing I consider a neurographic, like and also there's a difference between neurographica and neurographic art. In our, I would say that in English speaking country, neurographica and neurographic art sometimes used interchangeably as if it means the same thing. They're not the same thing, really, by definition. But I sometimes call it the same thing to make, for people to make it more understandable. When they say neurographic, they what? Because it's it's a foreign term, which is official term that describes the method of neurographic. It's a drawing method developed developed by Pavel Piskarov, the founder of neurographic and the main instructor of neurographic. He's, he's uh, the top authority in the world in this method. So this is his term, neurographic. Neurographic art is just something that can be easy to understand because it's art, uh, graphic art, kind of uh, understandable. This is not as important, so you may use it the same thing, but there is a distinction. But if you prefer use, using it, I, I sometimes I use term neurographic in neurographic art. So when this drawing, specific drawing, it's a pure neurographic. And the founder, Pavel Piskaryov is very particular about preserving the purity of the method, uh, authenticity of the method. So this drawing, as in my class, is done using just a seven-step formula that I mentioned before. It includes a theme, the topic that we're drawing, composition, how it was drawn, rounding the corners. It's probably, you see those green kind of integration, the figure and the environment. So the, the lines are the figure, here main figures are connected to the background, the background of the page. It's side by side. Integration, applying colors. There's also a rule how to apply colors. And also suggestion, how to make, because the color not only make a picture more impressive and pretty, but also we integrated by unite certain areas, field lines, the stronger lines that carry our like, more energy, more intention, resolution fixing is uh, the main, the focus of the drawing and the theme Then we compare what happened between theme one and theme two. So that's uh, the basic algorithm or the formula that we use in Neurographica to create those drawings. And if a drawing is created using this process and includes all the elements and providing that the neurographic line is done correctly, we can consider, yes, but this is artwork or drawing created using the method of neurographic. Similar to this, a kind of similar drawing that I also created in one of my classes, the black and white. It's also neurographic, it's black and white. And also, even if it nothing includes colors, color coloring pencil, so, but it still has some shading indicating certain, certain elements and unites certain areas. So neurographica could be black and white. So the ne neurographica, pure neurographica, also include the neurographic line, the principle of rounding, and interconnectedness. Uh, also use steps and all, everything, all that I explain in my courses and I, I explain only very basic things, how to draw the neurographic line just to complete the drawing. Because if I explain the entire process, it will take too long. And as a result, you will not be able to complete the drawing in uh, my free classes. So that's why I do not explain what neuro the neurographic is neurographic line is in 
full extent, uh, complete definition. If I mentioned about the neurographic line, I would like to explain it again. So the neurographic line. So I use just a simple marker and I show how to draw. You can use pencil, pen, anything that can produce a line. This is the line, which we call a neurographic line, and it's very different from what you've probably seen online, very different from the line that I showed at the very beginning, something like this. So the neurographic line, as you can probably observe, doesn't repeat itself. So this part is not equal to another part. And when we extend it, when we draw it, we do not know the exact path. This means that our hand creates like slight move, movement. Even if we know the direction where we're drawing it. For example, I, guess I would like to draw from this point to that point, the neurographic line will be something like this. It's a very natural way of representing the line, and this is the line as we see it in nature. You can probably see as the line as the, uh, the cracks in the wall on earth when it dries. Lines like um, waves, branches, leaves, anything in nature that it seems like a straight line is not straight because it also has unpredictable movement that is probably created based on the environment. So it's every turn is shaped by the environment. Like, let's say that an example is um, uh, something is growing. If we see a tree is growing or a vine is growing, it will probably look for something at the touch. So there will be some factors that affect it growth. They're not free. They're not done without any calculations that are hidden in the nature. So when, when we draw this line, we, yes, we're trying to learn the language of nature so we can send it our message, so-called message to the universe and uh, act accordingly to understand better, to connect better, to feel the, more connected to the universe and in this way act together with in resonance with it, not against it. And when we act against it, that's what creates our difficulties and blockages and disease, lack of ease, restraints, and everything that we call difficulties and challenges in life. But this, of course, is very philosophical issue and question that we're not going to discuss right now. The second most important principle on neurographica, and of course, the principle of rounding, that's probably, it's easy to draw, and it's probably more understandable. Uh, for, as you can see in many of the drawings that you saw the line, connecting with another line, and this area is, as you can imagine, here it kind of has some softness. So 
So there are two, two important factors why we do this. And the first one, this shows that the two lines are connected, which is also important as we're trying, if we're thinking about neurons, and that again, it's explained in my courses, my paid courses that that's available for everyone. I explain why this connection and what, what I mean about well, neurons and how we connect it. So, so you know, I'll just state the fact that the more connections we form and those lines imitate our brain, the work, working on our brain, the more neurons are connected, the more energy and the more power and we can use to solve and address our challenges, issues, or answer questions. So it's one element. And the second one is probably more important. Why we create, we add rounding on every intersection. So if you look carefully in an intersection, pay attention, as just lines, when they intersect, they create those sharp corners. It might not appear as anything else. Uh, probably we do not pay even attention in everyday life. But very deep at, at the, in our subconscious mind, there is a notion about friendliness. Like for example, the circle. The circle represents everything positive and friendly in this in our life, for our early brain, for our what we call the dinosaur brain, that's what we perceived. The circle was perceived as something friendly. The circle is the, the sun, the moon. And if you look on a just general shape, it's, it's not threatening. It also indicates symmetry, perfection, no beginning, no end and all the positive things associated with it. The triangle is just the opposite. It's also an ancient figure, an ancient element that was registered in the human brain. But because of the corners, it represents the element of danger and, or discomfort. Well, think about broken glass or arrow or spikes or clothes or fangs. So, and then you get the idea why we instinctively we stay away from anything sharp. It's just the basic idea of keeping ourselves safe. And when we see, like on these drawings, like on these two lines, when they meet, they form immediately four corners and each of them represents something like this. So that's why we draw those half circles, half moon. You can imagine them in every possible way described. And here we remove the sense of element of threat or danger or just discomfort. With our own hand, we bring something completely different. We change a negative aspect into positive. Because as the mind completes, it's always in, can imagine put a small circle here or there. And that, that is very pleasant to see. Of course, we do not have to draw this, and I'm just showing, illustrate my example. So that's about the element of rounding, the principle of rounding that's probably most distinguished neurographica as among the other. Also the line, I mentioned an interconnectedness, is all the elements are connected in our, in our drawing picture. The line is served for connection. And specifically in neurographic and neurographic line, 
the nine is a special element because it has a meaning. Of course, many artists in the past tried to imitate nature in, the, for example, Art Nouveau, was uh, about a thousand years ago, uh, thousand, sorry, hundred years ago, 1920s, 1930s, Art Nouveau was very popular. And they, many artists tried to imitate nature and they also, you could see furniture and pictures created with these wavy lines. But that was just imitation. The true significance line acquired on, in this method, the method of neurographica. So, so everything is connected. So it's not only imitation of nature, repeating it, but also trying to understand its language and send the message. For example, in this drawing, it's a way of sending the message to the universe. That's working with a timeline. It's an algorithm a module of your timing. And it's done according to the seven step formula, like this, following all the adhering all the rules and and suggestions, neurographica, that just to use the difference as a composition, how we create this drawing. So it has a meaning, it has a theme, and it's a pure neurographica. Talking about pure neurographica, what neurographic art is, I would say, I'm not sure whether it's official definition, but it's a more relaxed way of using neurographica. So in my free tutorials that you can see on YouTube that I share in my groups, typically I show neurographic art, but not uh, like most close to example. This is neurographic that I showed, this is in my class. So it's a very loose definition. It's hard to tell where neurographica ends and neurographic art begins. But I would say that it is a more relaxed way of using neurographica. Like for example, uh, let me say this one, this neurographic art, as well, the library that we were drawing recently. It has the line. The line is done correctly according to the definition. We have colors it was following the steps of how we're creating a drawing, but it's a, Certain elements are not added, and I do not add them just to leave maybe the drawing more, more artistic looking. But it's, it's more like between neurographic art and neuro art, I would say like that. So let's see an example of the next. So this is pure neurographic and the class, this is neuro art. But it has the element, the neurographic line, the rounding, and everything is connected. It has a meaning, of course. But by the way, when I mentioned about neuro, neuro art, neuro art is known as a form of art in North America, in Western countries. Probably there's a different definition that uh, were by, used by Pavel Piskarev. I do not know exactly what he means. Like, there's also, he continues using the neurographic line, the principle of rounding, interconnectedness, but it's more like using, could be more recognizable shapes. Neurographic is abstract, a form of art. And I would like to share with you the definition of neuro art as it's known here in the field of, and it's related to neuroscience. Okay, uh, prepare it. Neuro art is the expression of an augmented artistic imagination, which under the impact of neuroscience addresses the most essential aspects of human nature. The senses 
and their complex neural mechanism, the problem of consciousness and identity, the question of emotional response, and its neurobiological underpinnings, the mystery of sleep, and the effects of neurological impairments, a major issue neuroart ventures to explore. Okay, so this is from a thesis of uh, Dr. Science, future Dr. Science, who uses the exploring uh, art and neuroscience, and it using a definition of neuroart. So what we use neuroart, it's something to do art and neuroscience. So we'll be careful when you, when you describe it as neuroart, because it may mean something else. Okay, so, but I, I will use it as neuroart. It's like, in my definition that I will work to use in this, my courses and my groups, it's my YouTube, it's like more relaxed application on neurographic art. The elements of this will be missing, but they still preserve certain elements that make it connected and related to neurographical. So as you can see, this is also neuro art. It's beautiful. I use Neuroline and the element of rounding. This is also neurographic. Neuro art is very little, of just shows um, just uh, colors, neurographic line and principle of rounding. This is, in spite of its appearance, is on colored paper and done with a marker, with gold marker. It's, it's more pure neurographica. It was created by using the elements of composition, the neurographic line, the principle of rounding, the formula, and all the elements are present in this drawing. So this is more in spite of its colorful appearance, it's neurographica. And some other, it's more like, it's not so much artwork, it's a technical drawing exercise, Neuro mandala, uh, pure neurographica, neuro mandala, the course that I teach, more advanced course. This is also mm, neurographica, it's uh, ancestral mandala, and the course I'm planning to offer sometime in the future, maybe in January. So let me know if you are interested. It's uh, re related to our, based on our relationship with our ancestors. Seven, seven circles and seven levels of our ancestors. And of course, uh, and this one, the next one, oh, sorry, it appears this way. Uh, this is uh, the hero's journey. It's also mandala from the neuro mandala course. And it uh, attempts to create a path of a journey using for one of the projects. It's so used in Joseph Campbell's formula and the idea of the hero's journey. And this is the course I'm going to offer very soon. Those who are present with me today on the 7th of, of January. I'm planning to offer this course soon as traditional at the beginning of the year to think about our journey at the start of the year. Okay, I hope you have a little bit more understanding about neurographica, neurographic art and neuro art. If you have any questions, please contact me, you can use comments on YouTube, you can use comments on Facebook, you can connect me via Facebook Messenger, you can find me email, I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you in um, my classes. Have a nice neurographic journey. Thank you.